Welcome to the next video. This week we're going to be building the Mordheim board. See you after this. Okay, so in this video we are going to take the first Mordheim board, uh, Mordheim style board that we've been building. Um, I've got the buildings ready, I now need to kind of tile it and, and make it look playable, make it look awesome. So we're going to go through all of those steps. It's a long one this week. Um, there are a lot of processes that are kind of repetitive, so there's a lot of time-lapse stuff in there, but I'll talk over that and kind of explain what it is that I'm doing. Um, I'm coming to you with this from the new workspace, which is great. It's a little bit echoey. I maybe need to sort something out with that, um, dampen down some of the walls a little bit, so I apologise if that's too echoey. Um, yeah, enjoy, and I'll see you at the other side. First, we wanted... I've got my daughter helping me here as well. She helped with quite a lot of this tyre work. Um, the first job was kind of a case of setting out where I wanted this building to be and um, the bridge and the towers are kind of they they link together but we also had to lay out just how far along the canal I wanted them um, and what I ended up doing here was creating a buffer almost around the building using the tiles and then where the building sit is left as the um, expanded polystyrene which is the white polystyrene it's been painted black here but um, <clears throat> what I, I think I might do for the next board is just tile the boards completely and then build on top of them to create an edge where I want the buildings to go or even leave some of the buildings free form so that they can fit anywhere. With these it was slightly different. Um, here we're just using a bit of glue um, and some base ready mix to, to fill in the gap at the back between there, give it kind of a concrete rubble um, feel. But... Um, the the tiles worked really well and what I wanted was something to hold the buildings in place and these needed to go into a specific place. Um, just sealing them down there with some um, sealant mix and some isopropyl alcohol. And these needed to go there because the, the building I'm moving there, the water mill needed to be lined up with the water mill and it's got the steps going down. The, the bridges need to be lined up so that they could fit together. So these needed to go into the places where they needed to go. Um, whereas other buildings won't necessarily. So I might tile the other boards and then place the buildings on top and maybe lock some of them in like I have these with the edge in. Maybe some of them I'll leave freeform. Um, once we'd got down the edges of where they wanted to go, just use some basing glue, um, which is basically PVA glue you could use here. I just use the basing glue because it dries a little bit quicker. Um, and me and my eldest daughter then just set about randomly, or trying to be as random as possible, um, putting the tiles down. These were designed, when I cut these out, I designed them to lock in with each other. So the bigger tiles are 3 centimeters by 3 centimeters, the smaller squares are 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter, and then there are some 2 by 1 longer ones, so that they all tessellate together um, in a seemingly random pattern, but they all fit together nicely. Uh, so we went across the whole board and did this. Um, my eldest daughter decided she wanted to do a circular pattern of bricks. Um, so we used a Pringles can to give her kind of the the diameter there, the circumference, if you will, and she laid the bricks out. And then used um, the same kind of method, used the, the glue and the bricks just to fill that in and create... Well, it worked out really well, actually, create a, a circle of bricks in the middle. Just uh, breaks up those slabs a little bit, gives it a little bit of ornamentation. Um, you can see there I am brushing in a mix of sand and grout in between um, the slabs. And what that does is it locks everything in place. It fills up the gaps in between so that, uh, that it's not kind of going straight down to the polystyrene. Um, when we spray that with water and the sealant mix later, it really locks it in place because the, the tile grout is tile grout. Here I'm putting in a circular stone in the middle of the brick circle and I've embedded a magnet into there as well. Um, and you'll see why in a little bit. And there's a statue that I've put a, a metal washer on the bottom of and I wanted to be able to hold it in place. It's not the strongest magnetic force there, but it holds it in place um, when you are playing it. Um, which you'll see in the next shot, I believe. There we go. So that is held in place by the magnet. There's a washer on the bottom of the stone plinth, and that just attaches to the magnet. Now, there are also some 3D printed um, manhole covers there that I made, designed um, in Tinkercad and then printed um, just to kind of drop in, painted those up with a rust effect, um, which you can see in some of my other videos. 
this was where I just wanted a little bit of a basement steps just so that it just adds a little bit of extra it's not really playable but it just when the building's in place it looks like it goes somewhere but it's flooded from the canal um so i marked where the interior line of the thing was and then added a little bit for some bricks around the edge and then i used the craft knife to dig that out um or to carve it out it's not not the neatest carving work i've ever done um again you can see a lot of this part of the problem with this build was I had more locations than a Hollywood film, really. You know, jumping between the study, the living room, trying to get some done in the new workshop without a table as it was being built. You know, it's just everywhere. So it just made the whole build a little bit longer and a little bit more difficult than it needed to be, uh, moving everything around. Um, so you, I've built in there some steps as well, you can see, which lead up to the uh, watermill building. Um, and they are firmly fitted and they're attached to the boards. So they don't come off with the building. Use modeling compound to pack it out. Now I'm going to pour some resin in here later and resin heats up when it sets. So if the resin is going directly onto polystyrene, particularly the white expanded polystyrene, um, it can melt it and it can cause real issues. Um, so what I wanted to do, you know, I'll go over it with Mod Podge and black paint and everything, but I wanted to use the scenic sealant just to help. I then needed to give an overbrush to the bricks inside the canal. Now an overbrush is a bit like, so you load up your brush with some paint. In this case I'm using browns and reds and then you wipe most of it off on a tissue. Not quite as much as if you're doing a dry brush, you still leave a little bit on. Um, but the idea is that you can overbrush it so you can brush it like this and it picks up on the bricks but it doesn't erase the um, dark shadows in between the bricks that have been painted black. Um, so you can still get that difference between them, you still get that contrast, you still get the dark shadows, um, but it's a little bit lighter than a dry brush. So that's that's called an overbrush. So you get a paint on your brush and then um, brush it on and stipple it as well, stipple it on. So you can see the effect that it has. You can still see the dark crevices between the bricks. Um, and I went over that with several different colours. There were some yellows, some oranges and things like that. I then did exactly the same thing but with greys. Um, getting lighter and lighter onto the stones on top. Um, it doesn't really scan well on the camera. It doesn't pick up as bright as it is actually in real life. You can see some of the highlights. But I went over that with dark grey, then a slightly lighter grey, and, and then finally with a white, um, although the white was more of a dry brush. Um, and that was over all of the slabs um, and all of the stonework on top. Trying not to get it on the rusty manhole covers and things like that where I can, but again, it doesn't matter hugely. It all blends together later when we do the oil wash, which ties everything together with a, a whole layer of grime. Um, and what I did as well in a minute, um, I picked out some of the slabs and some of the stones with reds and blues just to give them a little bit of a standout. It, you know, it just adds a bit of colour. It looks like some of them are slightly different. It's a common trick just to kind of make it look like they're not all identical, not look all made out of the same thing. I also went round all of the smaller bricks, so the circle that my daughter had made and the ones that separate different things, I went round those with different colours as well, slightly lighter colours. I then used green washes, uh, or oh, sorry, green contrast paints um, and green washes to create a kind of grimy, mouldy slime line across the top of the bricks which again looks better in real life than it does on camera um, and you can see on there how I've picked out some of the bricks on those walls as well with slightly lighter colours just to give it that impression. Um, one thing that I use in a minute is that Vallejo moss wash and I don't love it when it first goes on it is incredibly bright um, it is an incredibly bright yellow um, as you can see here it, it, it looks horrendous but once it's been oil washed and once everything's been toned down and once it's dried, it does look a lot more realistic, like kind of a yellow lichen. When I did my toxic waste board, which I've not done a video for, I did that a long time ago, a few years ago. One of the things that bugged me was you could see the baseboard through the resin and it didn't look great. So because for that one I'd painted it white and it just looked rubbish to see the wood grain and everything. So for this one I wanted to paint the whole thing black. So I used the um, AK Acrylic Rubber Black with the airbrush. Didn't really work, didn't like it, wasn't dark enough, didn't get enough coverage. So I just resorted to good old cheap acrylic paints. Um, I think this is probably the, the base 
basic stuff from the works, about three quid for a tube, and it's just black. So I went over it with black first to give it a really dark base, trying to think about what a canal would look like. It has that dark, gloomy water, but there are colours that come through. Um, so once I'd done that, I went th over it with a green and a brown, um, kind of a sandy brown, um, just to pick out patches and give it a colour variation. You can see this slightly when we do the resin pour. Honestly, I probably won't do it for the next board um, because I've gone for a really dark coloured resin and I kind of need to carry that on now with the second board. I can't go for a lighter resin pour because it flows together and it would just look awful. Um, so I don't think I would probably put this... I would just paint it black. I'd probably put the green here around the bottom of the rocks, uh, the bottom of the bricks because that looks good. That does peak above the resin. Um, and you can see here a little bit more. It gives it a nice variant. And to be honest... If I was just leaving it as the wood and kind of selling that as, as a sludgy canal, I could leave it like that and that would look great. I could have put a really thin, clear resin pour on there, but I didn't. I went dark um, and it didn't work. We just can't see it very well through it. Now I wanted to build the wooden platform. This was my first attempt and I didn't like the big circular, uh, the big round dowels for it. They just looked completely out of scale with everything. Um, it was, you know, it was strong, but... I decided to go for the um, five mil square balsa wood and just knocked this together. Very little measuring, really. Just did it all by eye. And I wanted it big enough for the base of the figures to fit on, which are about 32 mil bases. Um, so I designed it so that a 32 mil base could fit comfortably on the top. But, um, you know, it, there was no massive amount of measurement with this. It was doing it by eye, which I think gives it a more natural kind of feel to it it is very ramshackled by the time it's finished um, and this is all made with the five uh, i think it's about four or five mil um balsa sticks and coffee stirrers you could use um long match sticks if you could get them they're about the same size it just felt better for scale um than the dowels which like i said felt absolutely massive and this is all held together with super glue um put some struts on it where i felt they were needed um, I created the longer walkway pieces using a bit of double-sided tape so that everything was held in place. You can see there a little strip of that. And that just holds everything in place while you're gluing it together. The you know even with accelerator super glue doesn't dry Im like immediately immediately on the wood, so it's just easier to have everything. But it does get fiddly. Um, and I put those in place, um, made a couple of those, and then stuck them all together and again coffee stirrer sticks for the batons along the top and again so much super glue on my fingers doing this um i could have I should, probably should have used tweezers but my tweezers are all a bit rubbish now and a bit um they, they don't close properly because i mistreat them um so i need to get new, new ones so once we know everything fits it's a case of building some steps for it which again just doing it all by eye um cutting everything in where needed using the same um, wooden beams, wooden sticks for the struts and then coffee stirrers for the steps and putting those in, yeah, kind of eyeballing where they need to go to give them a good height. It's, they're not steps that a figure is going to necessarily be able to stop on halfway up for playability, but I, I, I wanted it to be strong more than anything. Again, I imagine that the children are going to be playing with this and bashing the figures up and down to i kind of cheated with painting for these it was just a dark brown spray paint undercoat um and then a dry brush with a sandstone color um dry brush is a bit like the overbrushing i did with the bricks except you wipe a lot more of your paint off on the tissue paper or the kitchen roll so you only really then pick out the edges of whatever it is that you're dry brushing so you can see it kind of picks out the edge of the wood beam of the wood slats um and of the steps it just gives it a bit of a highlight gives it a bit of texture gives it a different um variation of color across it so it doesn't just look like flat brown um from the kind of spray paint that i put on there um, and i went through this again i went the sandstone color Went back over it with a lighter brown and then a white as well. I think, to be fair, I think I did the light brown first, then the sandstone, um, and then the white. And then, like the brick walls in the canal, just went over it with some green washes and green contrast paints just to add the kind of 
mouldy, mildewy look um, that you get on damp wood um, close to water. Um, resorted to using the airbrush in the end, it just gave a little bit of a better fade, a um, little bit of better colour um, coverage over there. I didn't cover the whole thing, obviously, just where I thought damp would grow. Um, and just use that to finish it off nicely. Um, and that looks really good. Once it dries, you'll see in the final shots it looks really good. The next thing I wanted to do was build the water wheel. I thought about building this out of wood, but that would have been ridiculous. It would have taken too long. So I decided to go for the XPS foam. Using the circle jig on my hot wire cutter, I cut an ins um, cut out a ring, um, or two rings, sorry, and then I cut out some smaller rings for the middle. Weathered these using a wire brush to try and give them some sort of wood grain, and then used um, just a pen to mark out where kind of plank marks, if you will, so as though it's been made out, not necessarily out of planks, but out of chunks of wood that have been bolted together to make the wheels. Um, and to just deepen the grain, the the wire wool brush, the wire brush didn't really work great. It you know it gives some kind of grain effect, but not hugely. So I emphasised it with the pen, um, using a bit of plastic tubing and a kebab stick for the axle that will go in. Um, and then I lost a, uh, quite a bit of footage here. So basically, what I did was I used a little bit of the white pipe, uh, white tubing, and more of the wooden sticks that I'd used um, to glue it all together to make a water wheel and I made two of these one on each side because it's supposed to be underwater the bottom is supposed to be underwater and I didn't want to obviously have to put too much resin in um, I cut off the bottom of the wheel so that when it sits down on the wood on the base of the board it looks like it's submerged in the water it looks like it's deeper than it is so I only have to do a shallow resin pour still but it, it sells that um, idea that more of the wheel is underwater than could possibly be with the resin pour and, and that works fine once it's done um, once the resin's in there, it, it reads really well, which is what all of this space, what it looks like when you, you know, it's not going to hold up to kind of scientific accuracy. Um, painted these um, Mod Podge and Black paint, the same as all my XPS stuff I do, um, and then started to stick on this. These were lollipop sticks rather than coffee stirrers. They're just a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger. And stuck those as the paddles for the water wheel using super glue. Again, because I've used the Mod Podge and the black paint on the XPS, I don't have to worry about the super glue possibly melting it. Um, in my experience, this super glue doesn't tend to melt the XPS foam, but you, you can't be too careful. Um, and you know, it is a bit viscous. I do hate using it sometimes, it just drips everywhere. But again, but a little bit of super glue, put the two pieces together, um, and that then is the water wheel um, and the whole thing I painted um, brown again and then overbrushed various different lighter browns and greys um, and whites um, much the same way as I did with the wooden um, beams for the wooden walkway but for this I wanted it a little bit darker you know this is going around in the water it will be wetter it will be darker um, even if it isn't necessarily turning still, if it is broken, I think it would still be, it would have been in water so long, it would be damp and dark and just dingy. So now we're starting to get ready for the resin pour. And this was a big worry. I've never done, well, I've done one resin pour probably to this kind of size before. That was a long time ago. Um, and it had leaks. I didn't want leaks. So the first job was to go along the bottom of all the joins with some UV resin. Um, now this resin sets under an ultraviolet light and it should, in theory, stop any resin from getting underneath the polystyrene that is stuck to the wooden board. Now, I know that seems daft, I know it seems like, well, it's stuck down with so much glue, but, you know, a bit like Jurassic Park says, resin will find a way and it will leak under there and it will seep out and it will come out the other side. Um, so this hopefully will just stop it. And I find the UV resin is a little bit more secure than just using Mod Podge on the joint. And it doesn't look as rubbish as using hot glue gun, which can look a bit rubbish underneath the um, underneath the resin pour. Um, then I had to make sh just wanted to position everything in place. Um, where does it go? Where will it fit? So, you know, obviously we've got the um, towers and the bridge of 
kind of fixed position at this point because of where the bricks are, where the slabs are. So glued everything down again with UV resin. Um, I didn't want to use super glue because I was just worried about how sticking it down with super glue would react when I do the resin pour. I kind of wanted to minimize the risk. And there's no saying whether super glue would go cloudy or something like that with the resin. So I just stuck to UV resin. Um, I built a little bit of a brick wall just using the same bricks as I did for the tower. I had some of those bricks left over um, and just built that little brick wall for the um, water wheel pivot, uh, the water wheel axle to sit into. And then started to kind of set everything out. Now, I realized at this point I needed another walkway. I didn't want to build another wooden walkway. Um, so I put together some layers of the gray XPS foam. And same as I had done with the water wheel, just marked out brick lines with... I started with a pen, but it was starting to kind of fray the end of the pen. So I just started to use a cocktail stick sharp point. Got, it got a better... Um, indentation got a better like read on the the texture of the foam so i went around and, and texted this this was more because i wanted to see if i could do it this was a different technique that i'd not done before rather than building it out of individual bricks rather than using a texture roller i wanted to see if i could do it by hand and make it look um good make it look realistic and i'm really pleased with how it turned out in the end um i also just wanted a little bit of damage um so that it just looks a little bit worn um, this was just a late addition, late idea. It didn't add anything really to the playability, but it you know, it looks cool. Um, looks like it's not pristine, which is in keeping with the ethos that I'm going for with the whole board and the whole game scheme that's, and the whole narrative that's going to be coming when I release these boards into schools. Um, hopefully in September I will have at least three of them finished. We'll see. This one's taken about two or three months to get finished, but a lot of that time, like I said, was moving around from one location to another, which didn't really help. So glued that into place with some hot glue gun um, and went around the edge, again sealing it with the UV resin um, and then used some of the base ready stuff, the same mix that I was, like rubble mix I'd used behind the water mill um, just to add to the crack where it's broken, just to look like rubble. Um, and then I'd give everything a black oil wash. Sorry for the focus shift in here. I need to figure out a better way to film without my whole body getting into it. That should be easier now the workshop's finished. Now my new studio workshop's finished. Um, and this is just a mix of black oil paint and white spirits. And then you wash everything with it. Except I didn't wash the water base because I didn't really want that to go black again. I put all those lights on it. It didn't really matter in the end, but I didn't want it to. So I washed the whole thing, dabbed it all off with the kitchen roll, um, and he gives it a whole grind. Now, this was an experiment that I'm not entirely sure it worked. It's green Mod Podge with green ink, and um, so Mod Podge and green ink, and then using this polyfiber mix that came out of one of our dog's toys that it had destroyed. I want to try and create like clingy seaweed kind of thing that flows in the resin comes up onto you know is, is kind of up onto the wood and stuff like that so i put loads of this stuff around i put loads on the wood um and pulled it up you can you can just about see it in the resin if you look closely which does give it a nice depth to it you have to look really closely to see it where it pulls up onto um the rocks and things like that it looks kind of cool it looks quite dry um don't love it but it's okay it, it i don't hate it it will do then I needed to build the reservoirs for the legs of the bridge. Because obviously I want to be able to place this down on the board as it is now, but I also want to take it off and for storage and transport, but we also need to pour resin. So if I just do a flat resin pour, the bridge is going to sit on top of the resin, which I considered doing and shaving in, you know, five mil off the bottom of the bridge so it still sits. But uh, I wanted to push myself. I wanted to see how this would work. So I used a bit of plastic, um... This was from a photo frame that I picked up from Poundland for a pound. Um, I think it was a Father's Day photo frame. You've just got to make sure you get one that's got a plastic um, window rather than glass. Or as I found out, none at all. I bought a frame, got it home and realised it just didn't have a cover at all. It was just, you just put the picture in and left it. So I suppose that's what you get from Poundland. Um, but this one did have the plastic in, so I cut it up into strips and... Um, and hot glued that down so because it was easier to get it into position quickly with hot glue than it was with the UV resin. Um, but once I had hot glued it in and I was happy with the position, I went back around um, the bottom and the sides with UV resin um, just to seal it um, and just check it that it still fits. 
Um, that you know, when you look closely, there are you know few gaps around the bridge and the resin, but you really have to look close and you really have to be picky to be bothered by it. Um, I'm really pleased with how it came out in the end. So I did that on both sides for both legs. Here you can see completely through my invisible hand that I'm applying um, UV resin, like I said, um, and using the, the torch to set it. This is the, some of the worst film cinematography you'll ever see. I do apologise. Um, but you've seen me put UV resin down along the bricks, along the bottom, same method, um, just to try and stop it pouring into that vat or the reservoir. Does it, you know, it, this was less of an issue. If, if it poured into here, it didn't matter too much because I could always carve it out, but I wanted to try and keep it as clean as possible. The, the bigger issue are the dams um, at the end of the boards. So to do those, I kind of double edged it. I put a bead of hot glue around um, the wood and the um, foam, the XPS. I was slightly worried that this would pull off the foam when it pulled off, but it didn't. It worked really well. When I pulled the plastic off, it left the hot glue behind, um, but then I could just pick the hot glue off of the polystyrene and it was fine. I don't know if that's because I coated it in the Mod Podge beforehand, it toughened it up, or just if my hot glue is not very strong. Um, but I did do this on with low temperature hot glue anyway. So I, I put the seal there, but then I also went around the edge of the plastic with the hot glue gun to give yet another seal just in case it breached that first hot glue seal. Um, and so this was hopefully a fail safe. Um, and obviously, because I'm trying to you know double down on all of this kind of stuff and really, really make sure that everything is as secure as it can be, um, I went over the inside of it with UV resin um, as well because I wanted to make sure that, <laughs> like I say, a, a resin leak into the bits where the bridge legs go isn't the end of the world, it's fine. If the resin leaks out of the side here, then it's going to destroy whatever it lands on. Um, you know, it's going to destroy any table that it's on, it's going to destroy the flooring, because once that resin is set, you cannot get it off. Um, so I just needed to make sure that, <laughs> as far as possible, this wasn't going to um, do that. It wasn't going to leak anywhere. I didn't go all the way up with the glue and the UV resin because I knew I was only doing kind of four or five mil resin pour. Um, and there didn't seem, you know, any point going any higher than that. The resin wasn't going to creep up. It wasn't going to, fall, you know, fall out higher points. So I only went up maybe six or seven. I went in the end it turned out I went higher than I needed to. And that was a bit of a pain because getting the UV resin off after the resin pour, I had to use snips and that did pull away some of the um polystyrene, some of the XPS. But that was I just had to go back in with some uh, Mod Podge and paint it back in with a bit of grey and, and black and you can't see it now. But it just meant redoing stuff that I'd already done. So once this was done it was ready for the actual resin pour. Okay, so we are going to do the resin pour. We are in the new outbuilding, just trying to get an angle where we're not blinded by lights. There we go. Um, so we're in the new outbuilding, um, which is good for several reasons. Firstly, um, nothing's finished yet, so there's no table, but more importantly, there's no flooring. So if there is a resin spill from the build, it will hopefully only go down onto the OSB subfloor, um, which is much easier to then sand down and clean up and things like that. So I need to level it, make sure that the level is spot on. Um, I've sealed it as well as I can. Um, I'm not too worried about these two bits because if they end up leaking, I can always carve it out, use a Dremel or something, that's fine. Um, it's these seals around the edge. I've used hot glue gun, I've used UV resin. Um, it's only going to be a very shallow pour anyway, maybe five mil, six mil, something like that, um, just to give it that canal look and feel. Um, I'm intrigued to see how this kind of stuff works underneath it. It might look absolutely awful. Um, it might look great. We shall see. But let's get on with mixing the pour. This resin is a one-to-one -one mix resin. So um, mixed, I think it was about... 300 mil part one, 300 mil part two, so about 600 mil in total um, of the first pour. And I ended up doing two pours because the first pour wasn't dark enough. Um, 
four, sorry, this one was 200 and 200, sorry, so 400 in total. And I mixed in some browns and greens, um, some inks, and a tiny little bit of black just to kind of give it some shadow, some depth. Um, it's really hard mixing it like this because you never know how dark it's going to be, especially because you're mixing it with only one part of the resin, and it will be, once you mix the other part of the resin in, it will obviously go lighter um, because it will be more dilute. Um, so it is quite hard to see how it is. We've got the um, hardener resting in some hot water there just so it flows a lot better. Um, this looked really dark to me. Um, so I was confident that this would be dark enough. It wasn't when I did it. You could see a little bit too much of the base through there, the wooden base. So I ended up doing another pour um, that was about half as much against. This was 400 mil um, or 400 grams. I think the second pour I did was maybe 200 grams, maybe 150 even. Um, and that one I just used blacks and browns and made it a lot darker as a second layer over the top. Um, and that worked a lot better. It, it kind of shadowed it all down. Maybe a little bit too dark, in fact. So it's, it's, it's a balancing act with all of this. But it, it looks like a dark, horrible canal. So I can't really complain about that. Um, my daughter was helping me at this point again. She wanted to get involved, tried to make this. A, it was more of a family affair, <laughs> all of this. Um which didn't make it any quicker, but it did make it a lot more fun to do. Um, so it was her job then to do the pour. So I had to show her how to do it. Uh, part of the thing when doing it, if you're doing a resin pour like this, you want to start low and then lift up as you're doing it. Because that, if you pour it from higher up, you will get um, fewer bubbles, is the theory. Anyway, at least behind it. Um because the, the bubbles pop when as it pours. And obviously, um, you don't want to start from too high because your aim might be off completely. Um, so I got her to pour it yeah, from low down and then raise it up as she's going. She did an absolutely brilliant job. Um, and then kind of move it around. Um, I'd got the board spot on level, so, which I was slightly worried about. I had used a spirit level. I had got it leveled by the stones but I wasn't sure if my cutting with the stones and with the polystyrene would be level so it's always a little bit of a risk but um it worked fine so you can, like you can see here you can still see the kind of the wood grain through it um at this point you can still see the spray colors that I put on the base you know the greens and the the sand colors and the browns and the blacks and that looked cool but you could still see the wood grain, which I didn't love. I don't know whether for the next one, maybe I'll use some kind of grout or filler just to smooth over the wood, but I think that could look rubbish as well. I could use a modeling compound. Um, but I think I've kind of bought into this method now, so I think this is how I'm going to have to do it for the rest. Um, came back after maybe about half an hour and checked. Um, there were some bubbles, so I popped these using a... Um, cigarette lighter so just kind of going over the not cigarette lighter one of the you know the lights we use for the candles um but it did it developed this annoying um i think it's called an amyl blur or something like that um which is kind of like this foggy layer on top which was annoying um but we decided to use i wanted well i wanted to create some waves so to do that i used um glossy mod podge and then an airbrush to um create wave effects so i put the mod podge on um and in this one i put the mod pod on mod on uh, put the mod podge on too large an area and it started to dry before i sprayed it so i had to go back over and, and kind of apply more mod podge to it um so that the airbrush could have an effect really um but it looks cool it looks good so you can see the airbrush blowing it um and creating waves and the ripples in the water. I don't. You know, obviously don't want big, massive waves. This is a. It's it's a canal. It's going to be coming in from the sea, so I will build um, two extra boards at the front, which are more of a harbour. Um, so it, it is coming in from a harbour, but um, you know it's not going to have big crashing waves. It's going to be you know ripples rather than anything. I just wanted to give the surface of the water some texture and get rid of that amyl, whatever it's called, the fogging on top of um, the. Um, the resin, which was just really, really annoying. I, th I think apparently it, it's caused if it dries with too much humidity. Um, and I tried to pop some of the bubbles by breathing on it, which you can do, but I don't know if I was too cold or if the the workshop was too cold, um, and uh, that might have caused it. I've never had it happen before, so I'm not quite sure what happened there. If anybody knows, um, please do put a message in the comments. Um, so for this again, full on family affair. My youngest daughter creating an absolute mess there. Um, 
she's applying um, the Mod Podge and then she gets bored so I come back in and do it. She comes back and does a bit more. My oldest daughter's using the airbrush. Um, it didn't take long. This probably took us, um, you know, five, ten minutes to do the whole thing. Um, but that was it. Once that was dried, it's time for the big reveal. Here we go.